guys, welcome back again. Beberapa bulan ini kita sudah dua kali mengadakan meetup dengan dokter community. Di sana kita berbicara banyak soal perkembangan teknologi, terutama dokter. Eh, by the way, this is the last episode. Ini episode pertamanya Flow. Docker adalah project open source yang umurnya hampir 4 tahun. Pendiri Docker adalah Solomon Hikes. Dulunya, Docker merupakan project internal antara Solomon Hikes dengan koleganya. Dan platform ini dirilis pada Mei 2013. Mau lihat keseruan meetup kita yang diadakan sama Docker Community? So, let's check it out. What's your opinion about Docker? Docker is a, a new technology that uh, takes the concept of virtualization and moves it up a level into the application space. Docker is a bit different in that there is no operating system, there is no virtual hardware, and you can move that freely across any Docker environment anywhere in the world. So your own Docker environment hosted in your own data center, Docker on Amazon, Docker on Google, it's very, very easy to move it around. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mel. So, the other question I want to ask to Mr. William Henry. Talking about Docker, Mr. William Henry, some people still have a doubt about the stability of Docker. So, what's your opinion? So, uh, some people ask about the stability of Docker and whether it's ready for prime time. Uh, in my opinion, you know, when Docker started off early on, uh, it was very much focused on the developer and uh, you know, getting a developer productive using container technology. But uh, it's been in production now with a lot of uh, enterprises for uh, several years and large deployments. Um, and there are a lot of projects on the back end to make it enterprise stable. So things like Kubernetes and, and uh, OpenShift and Swarm and other technologies out there that help make the uh, enterprise deployment cap uh, Capable. So yes, I think it's more than ready. Oh, I see. Do you think Docker can replace the function of virtual machine? Whether you should continue using virtual machines or move to containers or whether um, virtual machines are more suited, I think it really depends on the application and it depends on the nature of the application. So if you have an existing large monolithic application, it might be that it still works good on on a virtual machine. Having said that, it might be worth trying to containerize it, uh, if even just for the exercise, to see what would it take. Uh, if you can't containerize it, then you might ask yourself, why can't you? Um, and, and maybe you can make certain adjustments. Uh, but at the very least, it might help you understand what are the, you know, the core services that are required within your application. So you may still decide that the application is suited more towards a VM. Having said that, if you can uh, if you can focus on microservices and breaking things up with the service, they're naturally ready for uh, containerization and not using virtual machines at all. So it really depends on the application. If I have a huge e-commerce app, do you think I can use Docker for a core system? If cannot, which part I can use Docker? 
before. I think that that the that question is 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 a kind of yes and no answer. And what I mean by that is, yes, of course you can use Docker as the core. But I think, as I mentioned in earlier, there are other technologies that are required on top of uh, just containers to make sure that your application continues to run healthy and can scale and has security and has. Uh, whatever networking and uh, um, uh, persistent storage mechanisms that might be required. So yes, yes, you can use Docker as a core part of the technology, but I think there are other technologies in order uh, that run on top of that, uh, that uh, help you to become enterprise and have a stable application and website, commercial webs, com uh, e-commerce website up running for long durations. Okay, thank you, Mr. William Henry. So let's talk about the Atomic Project. Could you explain what is the Atomic Project? What the advantage of Atomic Project? So Atomic Project is really around optimizing a host operating system for containers. And so it's really about stripping down the operating system to the core capabilities that it requires. So things like um, uh, the kernel itself obviously but also things like systemd and se linux and uh, uh, technologies like docker or uh, perhaps run c from oci so some of the core technologies um, and maybe a registry uh, some of the core technologies that allow you to run an optimized um, an optimized container environment that's what atomic project is really all about there are a lot of other tooling with, within it, again, all stripped down but optimized uh, to help manage containers on and off of it in a very efficient uh, and industrial uh, DevOps, if you like, enabled CICD enabled environment. So it's definitely worth looking at what's inside of Atomic that, that allows it to be optimized for containers. But uh, consider it as a lightweight, container optimized OS operating system that uh, has features that will allow not just for the deployment but for the life cycle of your containers. Well, how Atomic Project work? Why we should use Atomic Project instead we use Docker Hub? So, so that's actually, uh, if you look at the last question I had is uh, about what, what is Project Atomic. So uh, Project Atomic is not a registry but it also has a registry. So, as I said, it's an optimized environment. Uh, it's based on technology, uh, several different technologies, but uh, you know, around its core, it's using uh, OS tree to make sure that it is uh, essentially immutable it's, itself in many ways. Uh, it uh, uses OS tree for updating itself, but in an atomic fashion. So you're not ever installing uh, yeah, when I say immutable, I, 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 real, I really mean that it never really changes except for updates to its versions, if you like, right? So whatever is inside of Atomic gets updated to newer versions, maybe patches, CVEs get, uh, get generated, but you're never installing new packages on Atomic, right? The other thing about a Project Atomic is it does have a registry, and why you would use that is you may not want to be going out over the internet to be pulling down images from something like Docker Hub. You want to have a local registry close by. So again, Atomic Registry is optimized for making sure that you have, uh, you know it has technologies in it that allow you to decide who's allowed to push images into your local registry, who's allowed to pull them, uh, signing those images and making sure that they're certified uh, and using Atomic, you can then turn around and say which registries you, you trust um, and you can assign trust credentials to registries for pulling down, um, pulling down images. So it's really about, again, optimization for localizing, but also optimization around the signing and trust of both the registries and the images in it. So that's why you would use uh, the Atomic registry with Atomic uh, for deploying uh, your large-scale, uh, say, for example, OpenShift-based uh, platform for containers. Okay, thank you, Mr. William Henry, for your time. Okay, last question for Mr. Neil Freshwell. If I search on the Docker Hub, I see that Portainer got more than 10 million pulls. I'm wondering what the advantage of the Portainer? 
container is, is, is trying to bring a graphical, easy to use interface to Docker. The purpose for that is to enable you know, people who might not be familiar working with APIs, who might not be familiar working with the Docker command line, and just makes it very easy for those people to, to use Docker. So that's, that, that's really the goal of Portainer, is to, is to make Docker much easier to use. Oke, okay, itu tadi keseluruhan kita dengan Docker Community. Di vlog selanjutnya, kita akan membahas sesuatu yang lebih fenomenal. Jangan lupa like, subscribe, and share. See you!